Hi, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. Hey, so today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about setting up auto exposure bracketing on your Nikon camera. Why would you want to use it? Well, auto exposure bracketing is really for blending exposures together to create what typically would be a high dynamic range or HDR photo. So why the heck would you want to do that? Well, HDR photography kind of got a little bit of a bad rap back in the day when it first came out and I don't know, around the early 2000s or so, uh, mainly because the processing software wasn't that great and people had a tendency to let the processing software over bake images so that they looked gritty and grungy and whites turned to gray and clouds that were white turned gray and it just, there were halos around things and it just was an overbaked look. Today's software is vastly different and, and you get amazing photographic results using HDR photography. It's used primarily in landscapes, cityscapes, real estate photography, uh, an amazing technique to use inside a church or cathedral. So it's definitely something that you wanna have in your tool bag as a photographer. Okay, I have another video that's dedicated entirely to what HDR is when you would want to use it, how you use it, and why you would want to use it, and, and but more importantly, when you should use it and when you shouldn't use it. So if you're not overly familiar with things like that, like, like well, how do I know when I need to use HDR photography? Watch this video or check out in the comments the link for that kind of tutorial series that goes over all of those things. It's, it's really well worth watching if you're just not sure when you should be using it. But essentially, when you're gonna use it is whenever the dynamic range of a photograph, the difference between the brights and the darks is so great that it exceeds your camera sensor's capabilities of capturing it all in one photo. So it's definitely something, like I said, you wanna use for so some of those situations that I mentioned earlier. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk briefly about camera settings. What settings should you be using on your camera to capture bracketed photos? Well, first thing is you wanna be on aperture priority mode. That's very important. So pick your aperture and kind of stick with it. Maybe if it's a landscape and it's daytime and you wanna go with F11 or F16, or maybe it's a nighttime shoot and you wanna use 2.8 or whatever your aperture is based on your creative vision. Uh, how much depth of field you want, etc. The important part about setting aperture priority mode is that you don't want the camera to change the aperture in between bracketed shots. What that'll do is potentially change your depth of field between each shot, which means some parts may be in focus in one bracket, the next photo may have other parts out of focus that were in focus in the first one, and etc. For, for the third or fourth or fifth. So that's gonna kinda of create a little bit of a, a mess for you. So it's very important to be in aperture priority mode uh, for your auto exposure bracketing, all right? So that's the first step. The next step is you probably wanna have auto ISO off if you're using a tripod. Now, I would recommend that you do use a tripod. So for the most part, since you're gonna be on a tripod, you can step down your ISO as low as you want to. Okay, you can be as to your lowest possible aperture if that's what's gonna work for your situation that you're in. If it's a landscape and not much is moving or really nothing's moving, you know, use your lowest aperture. Um, that way you're getting your cleanest images with the least amount of noise. So auto ISO off. Now, I will say if you're hand holding because you forgot to bring your tripod or you're like me and you were too lazy to carry it and you do wanna use auto ISO, you can get away with it if it's not too dark out. You know, if it's, if it's a, a situation where you're capable of hand holding it, by all means, give it a try. And in that case, go ahead and use your auto ISO. Um, so uh, I'll show you how to turn on and off auto ISO. And we'll also look at the menu settings for setting up bracketing in this next segment. Okay, so I'm here in the menu system of my Nikon uh, Z62 camera, but it doesn't really matter if you have a D850, if you have a, you know, a 
D750, a Z62, a Z9, a Z8. It's pretty much going to be the same setup here. So you're going to go down to your photo shooting menu and you're going to scroll down about 80, eh, about 80% of the way or so. All right. And you're going to look for a menu option that says auto bracketing. And again, this is in the photo shooting menu, the camera. Click on that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to set your number of shots and you're going to set your increment. So what exactly are we doing here? Well, I'm going to explain. When we're taking a high dynamic range photo, the reason why we're doing it is because the dynamic range of the scene, right, has exceeded what the camera is capable of recording. The differences in the bright parts and the dark parts of the image are so extreme that the camera can't capture it all. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a picture that's going to be two steps underexposed, a regular picture, and two steps overexposed, and then we're going to blend them together, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this to number of shots, which is going to be three, and the increment we're going to keep at 2.0, and that's going to set up three shots in a row, one shot, two stops underexposed, one shot regular, one shot, two, two uh, exposure values overexposed. So that's going to capture a wider range of all the highlights and the shadows and the midtones in our scene to capture a wider range or a higher range uh, of dyna a higher amount of dynamic range, HDR, right? High dynamic range. So, and again, we can change this a little bit so we can make this like five. Uh, and maybe it's a scene that's extremely dark and extremely bright on both ends, and you need to capture five at increments of two. That's okay. Um, you know, and you'll learn from experience as to when you're going to need more. But for the most part, this setting, three frames in increments of two, works in probably 85% of the situations you're going to be in, maybe 90%. It's very rare that you're going to need more than this. But if you do, just know that you can go as many as five frames and your increments can go as high as three stops or as low as 0 0.3. But this is kind of the magic formula most of the time. Okay. Three frames, two increments apart. That should capture a tremendous amount of dynamic range. Your camera already, especially if you're just shooting a Z, you're already capturing great dynamic range, but sometimes you need just a little bit extra. And this works in most scenarios. Okay, another simple way of turning bracketing on and off is just to press the I button. And by pressing the I button, you may, and, and again, keep in mind the I menu is customizable. So you may or may not have this in here, depending on what customizations you may have done. But I do keep auto bracketing in my I menu, and I can simply click here on auto bracketing in the I menu, and then I can alter my number of shots. And you'll see I have a bunch of other options as well. This is auto uh, exposure with the flash flash bracketing, white balance bracketing, and dynamic lighting bracketing. But we just want this one right here, auto exposure bracketing for HDRs. And so that's a quick and easy way to do it right off of your I button as well. Now, another thing that you do have to do, like we mentioned, is shut off auto ISO. Now, when you look at ISO down, it's actually blinking at the bottom of the screen there. You'll see it says ISO auto and a value in this case the exposure is at 2500 iso 2500 i want to shut auto iso off the easiest way to do this is just hold down the iso button and it'll turn yellow as you see and then spin the front command dial and you'll see auto go away and now i'm at iso 100 so if i took the picture now it would be at my lowest iso and that would give me the cleanest possible image I could get, uh, the least amount of noise. Now, one other little secret I'm going to show you, um, you know, do keep in mind that if I was going to do this, I need to take three pictures. And you can see that it is indicated in the top right where it says AE-BKT, and it says three of three, indicating that I need to take three pictures to complete this set of brackets. My favorite way of doing this is just to set it on the auto timer. So if you press down the frames button that's on the back of your camera all the way at the bottom, hold that down and just select two second. So now I'm on a two second timer 
And now if I just press the button once, what's going to happen is, and there we go. And now we just took three shots off the timer. Okay. Automatically. So we didn't have to press the button three separate times. So that's just a kind of quick little easy way for you to do it and uh, make sure you always get your brackets every time. So, and that's great. Again, if, if you're on the, uh, tripod or, or handheld, either way, use that two second timer so that it takes all your brackets for you automatically. Okay. So a quick example of an HDR photograph. So here I have a shot of a bridge taken with my DJI drone. Um, obviously the exposure is not so great. Okay. But the camera sensor did the best that it could. If we go into the develop tab here, we're in Lightroom by the way, uh, we can just go right over here to the histogram and we can see that we do have, by clicking this, it's going to show us our clipping and you see how this red appears. This means that this area is so overexposed that we've lost detail. So we lost detail in the sun and obviously we can see there's very little detail in the shadows here. So this is a great example of HDR. So what the camera and the drone does is we took a series of five shots because, well, the drone needs five. It can't do um, three shots of two-step increments. It doesn't have that capability, so I had to do five shots to get a wider dynamic range. So the first shot here I'm going to show you is two stops underexposed, and you'll see how we've recaptured that detail there in the sun. And then one underexposed. This is the normal photograph. And then we start to do an overexposed. You see how like the nice detail on the bridge is coming in now. And then two overexposed. And you see we got a tremendous amount of detail on the bridge now and all of this down here as well. So we merge these together. So the way I would do it, I like to use Luminar Neo with the HDR merge plugin. I would just select all five of these images, right click and say export and then go right here to HDR Merge in Luminar Neo. And we would end up with something that looks like this in the end, okay? So you can see all the incredible detail in the bridge there, uh, those beautiful blues and oranges that are, are nice um, contrasting colors uh, in the water reflected from the sunlight and in, in the shadow area. And we end up with this really cool photograph that we would not have been able to get if we had just done one photograph. Okay, so that's kind of the power of HDR. Okay, so one last quick tip. You wanna be shooting raw files when you're doing your auto exposure bracketing because you're gonna give the image processing system, whatever you're using, whether it be Neo with the HDR merge or Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever it is you're using to bracket and blend your photos together, you wanna to give that system as much image data as possible, and there's just tons more raw data in the raw file than there is the JPEG. Now, that being said, yes, you can do it with JPEG. You're just probably gonna get a better result with the raw file. And one last thing I'll throw out there. Yes, in the Nikon menus, there is an auto HDR function as well. In my opinion, it's not worth using, but if you did wanna try it out, just keep in mind it doesn't work with raw files. You'll need to be shooting JPEGs for that to uh, work. Otherwise you may see that the menu option is grayed out. Okay, so if you wanna learn more about how to blend these images together, as I mentioned, I do have a three-part series. I'm gonna leave the link in the description and I'll put it up there as well. Okay, so for you to check out that three-part series. And the three-part series is pretty in-depth in HDR. As I mentioned, it covers what it is when you should be using it, why, when you shouldn't be using it. It also dives into blending the photos together within Luminar Neo using the HDR Merge tool, and then also using Lightroom as a go-between uh, and using the HDR Merge tool of Neo as a plug-in to Lightroom as well. So it covers all of those aspects. So you get a real deep dive into understanding what uh, the process is for blending these images together. So this is really just a camera setting video and that's why we're not deep diving into that stuff as well. Just wanted to show you how to set up your camera to be successful with this. Also, um, after you check that out, if you want to join in on the conversation, we have a Facebook group as well. So I will leave the link uh, for the Facebook group as well for you in case you want to join us on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll see you there as part of the discussion. 
Okay, so I hope that that video helped you out. Um, if anything in this video has helped you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and of course ring the bell so you get notified of future updates on this channel. If you know the channel, you know I answer most comments as best I can, so please feel free to leave me a comment and let me know if this video has helped you out. And um, if you are a user of HDR photos, uh, you know, like I said, just drop me a line. Say hi. I don't care. I'll say hi right back. So, hey, I appreciate you. I really do. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you next time, YouTube. Bye-bye.